Transportation technology is one of the key factors that influences how our built environment is composed. Aside from determining how we get from point A to point B, it also helped determine where in space those points are located. The evolution of transportation is the evolution of the city. The changing way in which we move ourselves around the world has had and continues to have a clear mark on the land. In this module, we'll trace how our growing mobility pushed out the boundaries of our cities over time. Let's focus on a very old city, many of us know at least by name, which has been altered over time by transportation technology. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, starting around 1850 in London, transportation technology was limited to the foot and the hoof. Cities were laid out to maximize access by walking and for some, access by horse and buggy or ox and cart. This focus on human speed and scale kept cities relatively contained, limiting how far development could spread. For example, look at this map of London from 1560. Notice how close the buildings are to each other, how small the blocks, how narrow the streets, how small the urban footprint. This is a city built at a human scale. It's a city built around the transportation technology of the day. Fast forward to London, 1850. It's the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. New transportation technology is emerging, which is decoupling city size and walking. In 1829, the first regular omnibus service in London was launched. Its popularity led to a fiercely competitive market by 1832, where services were authorized to stop for passengers anywhere along their licensed routes. At nearly the same time in 1836, the promise of fast, reliable travel by rail began to inspire the imagination of the country. This is when the country's first commuter railway, the London to Greenwich route, opened. To get a sense of the city's growth, let's overlay the 1560 urban core on this 1850 map. London was a city growing in scale, far beyond its early boundaries. Its citizens were no longer limited by the distance they could be carried by their own two feet. It wasn't long before the first underground railway in the world, running between Farringdon and Paddington, was established in 1863. From there, Going into the early 20th century, multiple routes began to crawl under the bustling and ever-expanding city. The 20th century was marked by a revolution in personal transportation. The early automobile took the world by storm. As cars became more affordable, they not only changed the way people got around the city, but the way the city itself grew. In the 1920s and the 1930s, the personal automobile became more ubiquitous in cities and more affordable to the average citizen. This began the separation of land uses, moving residences farther from the city core and farther from places of work. In Auckland, the availability of cars meant residents could leave high-cost housing in the urban core for more affordable housing in growing suburbs. In the 1950s across the Pacific in the United States, soldiers were returning home from World War II. They were flush with cash from the newly created GI Bill, which provided funds for cars, housing, and education. Anxious to start families of their own, the demand for single-family units pushed housing farther away from the urban core. This movement was facilitated by the ever-growing popularity of the car and massive road-building efforts. As more and more residents left the city for surrounding suburbs, use of public transportation systems began to wane. Many public transportation systems, often privately operated, went out of business, while those that survived suffered dramatic service cutbacks, often propped up by massive government subsidies. The decline of urban density, coupled with a loss of transit ridership, service cutbacks, and the growth of farther flung suburbs and a decline in walking and cycling kickstarted a vicious cycle of auto centric urban development. 
The influence of the personal automobile can be seen in the map of today's London. The urbanized area has grown ever larger in expanse. Highways and arterials crisscross the city. While public transportation still serves many, the dominance of the automobile is unmistakable. Where London and many other cities across the globe go from here is up to urban planners and policymakers. To become more sustainable, we need to reconfigure our land uses, reduce our dependence on personal automobiles, reinvest in public transportation, and make our urban spaces more inviting to cyclists and pedestrians.